Hey and welcome to this jazz guitar lesson on how to solo over a song from my father in which I'm going to show you three different ways to think about approaching soloing over this fantastic Latin jazz standard. In my previous lesson I covered the chords and the harmony and if you don't know that that's where I would start so check the description for that if you need to get that first. If I put that chart from last time on the screen we can see We've got A, A, B, there's 24 bars, and we are in the key of F minor, and only one chord is out of key, that D flat seven. Everything else is in key, which means this is a great accessible song to practice soloing over. You know, it's a rarity to have this few chords, so enjoy it. And the first way we're gonna look at playing over this tune is with arpeggios, chord tones, whatever you wanna call it. And when working with arpeggios, it's essential to understand the notes you're playing. Don't just play shapes and, and patterns. You need to know what the root, the third and the fifth and seventh is. Otherwise, you're not gonna really make solos which connect with the chords um, very well. So, F minor seven, made up of F, A flat, C, E flat, root, minor third, perfect fifth, flat seven or, or minor seventh. E flat seven is E flat root, G third, major third that is, B flat fifth, D flat the flat seventh. D flat being root is D flat, F is the major third, A flat's our perfect fifth, and the B there is our flat seven. And then finally C seven, we've got C, E, G, B flat, root, major third, perfect fifth, flat seven. Now one thing to note, there's something really cool on that table that I like, and it's because the chords descend like that in that A section, F minor, E flat seven, D flat, C seven. Now, if you look at that table and go down each column, you'll see it's the notes just going down. In the first column it goes F, E flat, D flat, C, which is the root going down. And then each column does the same thing. So we've got the thirds going A flat, G, F, E. We've got the fifths going C, B flat, A flat, G. And then we've got the sevenths going E flat, D flat, B, B flat. So there's this cool descending line, and if you actually just play this to the chord, these are what we could call guide tones. You may have heard of this concept, but they're basically the notes which link between the chords, the notes which are close to each other. Now if you hear this against the progression, you'll see what I mean. So here's the root against each chord. F. Slide into it. <laughs> e flat. D flat. C, back to F. Here's the third, so this would be a mixture of minor thirds and major thirds, so A flat against the F. We're gonna use this to phrase later, E, G, which is the third of E flat. F, which is the third of D flat. Then E, which is the third of C. Then let's go back to an F, for the, to the root. And now fifths. So we're going to start on a C, which is the fifth of F. B flat, which is the fifth of E flat. A flat, which is the fifth of D flat. And G, which is the fifth of C. Let's go back to A flat, which is the now the third of F. Seventh, E flat, third of F. Sorry, seventh of F. <laughs> D flat. 7th of E flat, B, 7th of D flat, and then B flat, 7th of C, and let's go back up to C, which is the 5th of F. Now if I was you, I'd be thinking, great, you can play one note against each chord, and that sounds really boring. And you'd be right in thinking that, but what those notes are, are target notes to build phrases from, so that your soloing outlines the chords. Because if you just play notes from a scale, or you don't think about the chord tones, there'd be this real disconnect between what you're playing and what the band, what the rhythm section or the backing track are playing. So you've got to learn to be able to find the notes of the chords and you know using targeting just one in each bar like that as your start note whether it be the root third, fifth or seventh is a great way to do that. So let me play an example where I target the third of each chord on the start of each bar then play a phrase after that third and you'll hear the four you're gonna hear that but with some other stuff going on too. So 
I've illustrated what the chord tones are. Now let's go through some arpeggios that you could use for this. Just two octave arpeggios like this. There's your F minor, E flat seven. D flat seven. C7. And those are all you're gonna need because that's that's all the chords we got in the song. So I'm gonna go through some ideas with arpeggios that sort of get you started to applying them to the track as it as it moves along in time. We're just gonna use the A section again. So one octave, starting on the root. beneath it. So I'm going da da one semitone beneath the root to start. Let's put uh, let's descend the arpeggio. So starting on the seventh. Two, three, four. So I'm starting on an E flat for the F. Starting on a D flat for the E flat. So that's the seventh. Start on the B for the D flat. Starting on the B flat for the C. Back to F minor. Maybe let's combine some directions. So go up the F, down the the, the D, E flat, up the D flat, down the C. Let's bring in the second octave. So we're going to go two octaves this time. So two, three, four. Going up the up and down the E flat. Little chromatic link there. Up the C, up the F. Let's start from the top. So we're going to descend from the seventh of each each one. So it's just the arpeggio in reverse. Do a pattern. Let's start on this. Let's, I'll come up with this little phrase uh, with each one on the fifth. So I'm staying on the fifth, going down, trying to create a little melody with the. Maybe let's just go root to ninth. to E flat, C to D, F. So that was quite cool, that was going outside of the arpeggio, just using the, the adding the ninth. And really what you want to work with is, I said, wherever you finish on the, the current arpeggio, you've got to think about where you're going to lead into the next one. So if you were going, you need to finish on that F, the E flat is there for the next chord, or the G is there, or on the same string. So you could go, then down to the E flat, then you're into E flat. And it's wherever it puts you for the next chord, you've got to know. If we end on that A flat, you can either go down to the G or up to the B flat of the E flat. So a couple of things I did there was just playing the arpeggios to match the chords, then varying direction. And then you can put in things like, I did this once, you can put in a chromatic approach note, maybe beneath the root, like, so it's going E, F, A flat, C, E flat, then go D, E flat, so it's that D which is the approach note, then C, D flat, into the D flat arpeggio, B to C, so before every chord we're putting a, a, an approach. We could do that before the seventh, so just so going the seventh of F is, is E flat, so we're going D to start with. The seventh of uh, E flat is D flat, so we're gonna go C up to the D flat, then down. Seventh of D flat is B, so we're gonna go B flat into B. 
seventh of C is A, a B flat, so we're gonna go A to B flat. And then we're back to F. As you can see, it sounds a bit predictable if you keep doing that same idea, but these are simple ways just to get some extra notes out of your arpeggios. And a very simple thing you can do, I mean, you wanna try and hear this, not just come up with academic kind of, oh, I can do this, I can do that, but like, say if you start on the fifth, go down the arpeggio and then go back up to the seventh. Uh, and that already sounds more like a phrase. Uh, we can, you know, just stop playing them in order or make a jump, like instead of going, jump straight to the seventh. So I'm going uh, one, seven, five, three, do da da do, do da da do. Trying to hear it, and you know, I like to sing it as I play it, and I probably play more melodic ideas. If I put the track on again and just try and use the chord tones but sing what I play, I'll, I won't fall into just playing arpeggios, I'll, I'll play more phrases and interesting things. <laughs> And I was creeping into some scale stuff there, which we'll get on to next. Sorry, I don't know if you heard me then. I was creeping onto some scale stuff then, which we'll get onto next. But, I mean, how do I get to that point? It's, well, you know, if you practice the stuff I was showing you earlier, this until you can really hear it. You know, you hear this chord and you hear that arpeggio. You hear that chord, you hear the arpeggio, you can sing it. Wow, that's high for me. You don't have to be a good singer. Don't care what it sounds like. You can hum. And sing whatever works but unless you embrace this kind of idea you'll never really get the rewards of it and I know that sounds obvious but a lot of people people feel uncomfortable about doing that maybe other people in the house might hear them or, or you know it's a bit odd you're a bit self-conscious with it but you know you'll end up playing things you don't normally play you won't fall into licks and patterns and and probably when you you know saw me outlining the chord tones early you thought God, oh, it's just a arpeggio exercise it's a bit boring but deep learning of that and by that I mean you know where it is on the fretboard, you know the notes, you know the intervals, and you can hear it, means you'll be able to do things like I was just doing there. And that was a, a very basic kind of elementary sort of solo with those, just the chord tones. And by the end I ended up bringing, I think, some, some extra notes, but uh, mainly keeping to the chord tones. Method two is to use one scale over the whole thing. I'm gonna use the blue scale. Now, when I get to grips with the scale, first off, I like to do it in one octave position. So the, the F blue scale goes, that we can do it there on the A string, D string, G string, and it's a, a root minor third, fourth, flat five, the bluesy note, perfect fifth, flat seven, and the F. Now it contains a lot of the notes we need. It contains a lot of those notes of those of those chords. Not all of them, but it works really well. Now let's just try and put it on. And I'm going to do you know what Horace Silver does on his his solo. I'm just going to try and do some sort of call and response, simple ideas with that with that scale. <laughs> Phrasing. The same idea. Maybe close it off. Sometimes you just need to really just 
take yourself into a standard, really absorb the changes and where everything is on the neck. Explore your ideas. The arpeggios and the scales are the tools, they are the sounds and just some of the sounds you can go for. You need to get them under your fingers, into your head and try to, to create phrases with them. And that blue scale just lends itself to kind of bluesy call and response phrasing which is you know quite quite straightforward to do so yeah you can you can play with that idea of having one phrase and something kind of repeating based based on it now you may find the arpeggios and the blue scale a bit limiting maybe and, and you, you want some more sounds you want some different colors so some modes would be a way to to achieve that so the modes that i would go for for this uh, the f you got a few options you could use f aeolian so the minor scale <laughs> variations on that you could use the F harmonic minor so just raise the seventh bit of a more sort of interesting vibe to that one and then oh let's go with Dorian which has that note the sixth natural six which makes it sound quite interesting simple scale for the E flat seven would be E flat mixed lydian you could use D flat Lydian dominant for the for the D flat seven, and then this next scale is mixed Lydian flat two flat six, which is actually an F harmonic minor but played from C to C, so it's the same as this. of the harmonic minor. Anyway, those are the scales I would use. Now, you want to know the notes in, in those, and you want to know the intervals. Sorry. Start by just, you know, playing them, you know, you could use your looper, or just playing free time like I am now, and just find them, you know, play an F minor, and maybe sing and play the mode. E flat, mixed lydian. Lydian dominant, mix O flat two flat six. Get used to them, and you want to strive to create melodies with them. I like playing them up to the fifth and call it the high fives again. Then maybe start from the fifth. Be create a pat, you know. Um, let's go start on the third and then go down scale, and then back up. And gradually, you just expose yourself to hearing more with this. Obviously, you can ex extend what you're using, but you know, those are the modes that I would play around with to begin with if, if you wanted to. They, they will work perfectly well over these changes. So the resources from today's lesson can be found on my website. Check the description and the pinned comment for that. If you're new here, thank you for checking out my channel. My name's Andy, Jazz Guitar Lessons every Wednesday and Saturday. Please leave me a comment, any thoughts on uh, any of my thought processes and approaches, and if you've got any different ideas um, for this song. There's obviously tons of options for soloing over this, but uh, as this is quite a basic jazz standard, I thought it's best to just, you know, get used to the arpeggios, blue scale, and then maybe you can branch out into those modes that I, that I brought up at the end. Anyway, see you next time.